Joker, Foley Adieu, the highly anticipated sequel to the phenomenally successful 2019 film Joker. So, I have done a video on that first Joker film, which I will link down in the description box so you can watch that if you would like. But to summarize my sentiments regarding that film, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of the Joker movie. And I say that as a massive Batman fan. I'm not terribly wild about 2019's Joker. I think technically it is a marvel. I mean, it's untouchable in terms of the quality of its filmmaking and the acting, um, certainly. But story-wise, I think it's very, very weak. And really, more broadly, I'm just not a huge fan of these villain films like Joker, like Maleficent, like Cruella. You know, art, I think, is kind of a good barometer for the society that produces it. And I kind of view the existence of such films as being perhaps indicative of something a tad wrong with our society. We live in a society, uh, you might say. Uh, but I think there's a tad too much uh, sympathy for the devil out there. But one of the major problems that I have with such films and one of the major problems that I had with 2019's Joker is that when you're making a movie about a character who is typically depicted as a villain, but now you're making them be the protagonist of the story, you have to do two things at once. You have to both depict them as the villain, which they are normally rendered as, but you also have to depict them as sympathetic enough so that the audience relates to them in some capacity at least and invests in their story. Now, when you're making a movie about a character who is normally depicted as being evil, uh, how do you go about doing that? Well, the answer is you just make everybody else be even more evil than they are. And that's essentially what 2019's Joker did. I mean, nothing is his fault. Uh, the movie basically just sets up a series of pre-approved targets for him to kill, which the audience not only condones but actively endorses because all the people that he kills in that movie, you want to see die. And so I find it rather gutless in that regard. Um, but also, I just found the character of Arthur Fleck in that movie to be a cartoonishly pathetic schmuck. I mean, he has some kind of mental illness, which is never exactly specified. He, he was abused as a child. He's poor. He gets beaten up constantly. He fails at, in his dream of being a comic uh, his girlfriend is imaginary. Like, it's all just a bit ridiculous. Uh, I found it to be, anyway. Um, uh, but beyond that, I think that movie, as an homage to Taxi Driver, I think that movie fails hard because of the passivity of its protagonist. Like, the movie Taxi Driver is driven, pun intended, I suppose, by the actions of Travis Bickle. Like, he makes that the story of that movie happen. Whereas, conversely... Arthur Fleck in Joker, like, the story just kind of happens around him, and he just kind of stumbles his way through what is supposed to be his own story. Like, the only proactive thing he does in that movie is shoot Robert De Niro at the end. I've never seen a movie with a more passive protagonist than that. But beyond all that, I just think it's a bad Joker movie. Like, to make the Joker be mentally ill from the get-go, I think kind of misses the point of the character. Uh, and also, not to take anything away from Joaquin Phoenix, because that that performance was a knockout, and he earned that Oscar that he got for that movie, but I think Arthur Fleck is a crap joker. I think it is. Like, I'll put it this way. If that dude was supposed to be Batman's greatest foe, that would be the shittiest Batman ever. Like, I ain't paying to see whatever Batman movie... Um, they would make where the where that guy would be, you know, the main threat because that would be so lame. Uh, but anyway, and you know, beyond that, we won't even talk about how the movie is really at heart just a couple hours of neo Marxian Trump bashing. Uh, you know, that's another matter altogether. But um, I'm not a big fan of that movie. Um, but being as how this movie, the sequel, is arguably maybe like the most anticipated film of the year. I was curious. I was like, you know, let's see what they did with the story. Let's see what they did with the character. Let's see what this movie has to offer. I went into it with no expectations, basically. Um, but it surprised me because I came out actually liking this movie, actually liking it more 
than the original movie. And I guess it just goes to show how much of a contrarian I am because this movie has gotten basically just wall-to-wall -wall hate since its debut. Like, the fans of the first movie um, just hate this film because it's kind of just a slap in the face to them. But being as how I am not a big fan of that first movie, I think I may uh, have uh, responded a bit better to it than others have because I actually really enjoyed it. And I'm going to tell you all about it and give you my take on it. Uh, be warned, I'm going to spoil the shit out of this movie. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want anything about it spoiled, leave now or forever hold your peace. So where does uh, Joker Foley Adieu pick up after uh, the events of the first film? Well, Joker is incarcerated. I think it's in Arkham Asylum, even though... It does not appear to be in the same um, spatial locale as the Arkham Asylum of the first movie. It appears to be some kind of Alcatraz-like facility, whereas in the first movie it didn't appear to be that way. But anyway, so he's locked up in the loony bin. He is abused by the guards because, of course, that's all this character exists for is to be abused. Um, but he is awaiting his trial for the events of the first film. Oh, yeah, and the movie opens with a cartoon, um, which kind of I thought was odd, but an interesting choice for an opener. Um, and it thematically kind of explains what the movie is actually about. And I actually really appreciated that after we got to the end of the movie. Uh, but anyway, so Arthur's what, um, going to trial for the murders that he did in the first movie. Uh, there's still a major movement following him because he is still the figurehead of the underclass, you could say, in Gotham. Um, so Harvey Dent is the uh, prosecutor in this case. So I, I, I was looking to see uh, if there was going to be any facial disfigurement in this movie uh, with that character. And I think there was. Um, but anyway, so Arthur, while incarcerated in Arkham, he meets um, Harleen Quinzel or Harley Quinn. Um, and he falls in love with her. She is played, of course, by Lady Gaga. And they kind of have this kind of Bonnie and Clyde type uh, romantic dynamic going. But anyway, so he goes to trial. Uh, he eventually fires his lawyer and represents himself, um, which makes for the most entertaining parts of the movie when he is basically functioning as his own lawyer in full clown makeup. Uh, and then there's a car bomb. Some people try to bust him out. He escapes. Um, and then something very, very shocking happens at the end of the movie after he is recaptured by the authorities. Um, but that's the overall plot of the movie. Now, as you probably already know, Joker Foley Adieu is a musical. Um, and it is not a musical in the typical sense of that word because with, your, with most musicals, such as Grease or... Um, you know, uh, hairspray or, or even cats, I suppose. Um, the, the story that the movie tells is told through the song. Uh, and that is not what happens in this film. Uh, the songs, the musical numbers are strictly kind of uh, reflections of his own psychosis. Um, like you could, like with most of the musical numbers in this, if not all, you could take them out and watch the movie and not really miss anything plot-wise. Uh, but that does not mean that these musical numbers aren't interesting, at least. Um, now, uh, I I'll say this. I don't get the sense that the people who made this movie had ever made a musical before, because, again, it's, it's very distinct from typical musicals that you may think of that may come to mind. But I still found it interesting by and large. Um, now, I want to say this. I don't think Lady Gaga is y utilized particularly well in this movie. The way that her version of the Harley Quinn character is written is a bit flat, I think. Like, the, the way that she and Joaquin, like, hook up. And, oh, yes, they do hook up. We do get a sex scene with full clown makeup and everything, which I wasn't really anticipating. But... Um, uh, the way that their characters kind of fall for each other, it's a, it's a bit thin, I think. And honestly, I don't, like, Lady Gaga's character doesn't really do anything in the film. Like, there, she, she, like, hovers around the action, but she doesn't really 
contribute much, I don't think. Um, but yeah, uh, the musical numbers, by and large, I found interesting. Um, Joaquin Phoenix can actually sing better than I thought he could. I mean, you know, he, he played Johnny Cash in the Walk the Line movie, but then again, Johnny Cash was not a particularly good singer, so that wasn't a very high bar to clear. But he really kind of surprised me with this. Like, he, he held his own. I knew Lady Gaga could sing, obviously, so she kind of carries the musical numbers, I guess, um, or some of them anyway. But Joaquin held his own, and honestly, some of these musical numbers, even though they don't really um, contribute much to the plot of the film, I suppose, I still found them quite entertaining at times. Like, there's one, like, Sonny and Cher-type musical number uh, where they sing... Uh, uh, the Bee Gees, To Love Somebody, which I thought was pretty fun, but the real, like, centerpiece as far as the, the musical aspects of this film uh, go is the courtroom musical drama, which you can see in the trailer, some of it, where he, like, beats the judge with the gavel, the kind of oversized comical gavel, um, there were, uh, he sings, where Joaquin sings solo, the film, the song, The Joker, from some old pre-existing musical, I believe, uh, but that worked wondrously, I thought. That that song fit the film, uh, it fit the character uh, so marvelously, and honestly, that was kind of the, that was really like the high point of the film, I think, in terms of the musical aspects of it. That really worked. Uh, now, uh, the, I will say this, at times I was kind of bored it, in this film because the thing about the first Joker movie is that there's a lot of action in it. I mean, he's getting beat up, again, constantly beat up. He's going places. He's, like, meeting different characters. Like, there is, it, there's a lot of momentum with that film, uh, but not so much with this one. This is really like a John Grisham-style 90s courtroom drama thriller kind of thing, and there's not a lot of what you'd call action in it, and... Um, I kind of respected that because with a comic book based movie, you're expecting there to be some action and there really isn't much of that in this movie, but I will say it did get a little tedious at times, but the point at which um, Arthur uh, fires his lawyer and opts to represent himself in his own trial, um, and again in full clown makeup and purple suit and everything, that is probably the most entertaining portion of the film because, dang, I think Joaquin was having the time of his life doing that because he speaks in this accent. I, it, it was like he was doing an impersonation of Kevin Spacey's uh, character from A Time to Kill, that just over-the-top southern accent that's kind of ridiculous, that sounds like the, the rooster from Looney Tunes, right? But, I mean... That had me rolling, and then when there's a scene where he does some, like, tap dancing in this, again, just had me rolling. I was kind of in stitches at, par at portions of this movie, uh, but uh, this movie uh, set out to piss off the fans of the original. I am fully convinced that that was the goal of Joker Folia Do was just to slap the fans of the first film in the face, but again, because I am not a big fan of the first film... I actually enjoyed this movie a lot more than it looks like a lot of other people are doing uh, because um, this movie kind of, it doubles down on the grit. Like, you know, the first Joker movie was kind of unique because it was a comic book film that was probably the most realistic uh, film ever based on, on a Batman uh, property. Like, that that was truly some, like, gritty realism applied to the Batman mythos, and this movie doubles down on it. Um, there is a, a scene in this film where, if I interpret this correctly, Arthur gets raped by the guards at Arkham, which, again, it kind of degrades the character in the eyes of the fans of the character, but I thought that was ballsy as hell doing that, and again, that's kind of pushing the envelope for a, a, a Batman-related property still. I thought that was, like, hella interesting, a, a very interesting choice. Um, but then let's come to the ending of the film, and this is the make-or-break thing. Uh, this, is, this is what is causing people to hate this film so much. So at the end of the film, um, after the car bomb explodes, 
um, and and Joker flees the, the the scene of the courtroom. Um, he meets up with Harley Quinn at the stairs, the now famous stairs, which occupied such a central role in the first film. And she dumps him like she's like. Because in the courtroom scenes, he, like, renounces the Joker persona. He's like, I'm sorry for what I did. I take full responsibility. I don't want to be the Joker anymore. I just want to be Arthur. So he, like, renounces the persona that he had created. And then when he meets up with her later, she's like, if you're not the Joker, I don't want anything to do with you because you're just, again, some cartoonishly pathetic schmuck now if you're not the Joker. So she's like, you know, we're done. We're splitsville. Uh, see you later. So she dumps him, and then he gets recaptured by the uh, police, and he gets taken back to Arkham. And then when he's in the asylum, this is how the film ends. Again, if you don't want it spoiled, just leave now. When he's in the asylum, another character, uh, a peripheral character that we've seen throughout the film, um, kind of on the fringes of things, comes up to him and uh, asks him or tells him a joke and then stabs him to death um, and then the movie ends as Arthur is bleeding out um, from his abdominal wounds while the dude who killed him is in the background carving the Glasgow smile in his own face. And so the twist uh, of the film, I suppose, is that Arthur was never the real Joker uh, at all. He was just, again, a cartoonishly pathetic schmuck. And the real Joker, I suppose, in this universe anyway, is the guy who kills him and carves the Chelsea grin in his own face, um, like Heath Ledger's Joker. Heath Ledger's much more intimidating and threatening and badass Joker in The Dark Knight. Uh, and that's how it ends. And that ending, I, I loved it. I will tell you that right now. I, the ending to this film redeemed the whole thing. Like, for me... I loved it because of how ballsy and how brave it was. Um, and I get why the fans of the first film hate it. But again, given that I'm not really a fan of the first film, I thought it was just awesome. I thought it was such a great twist. I thought it was such a, just an inventive direction to take. Um, and again, it all ties in with the cartoon that the film opens with where the Joker is menaced by his own shadow because what eventually happens in the film, the, the culmination of the film, is that the Joker is not an individual. It is a title. It is an idea. And the very the whole theme of the film is that this persona has taken on a life of its own and that somebody else can assume the mantle that Arthur himself has uh, voluntarily relinquished. And because he relinquished it, because he had some kind of uh, conscience, he was no longer fit to embody the character of the Joker. And so, it, again, he had to die thematically by the end. And I freaking loved it. I think that was the one of the bravest endings uh, to a film I've ever seen. I loved it. I get why people hate it, but I truly think that this film is unjustly maligned. Um, it doesn't always work, I'll say that. Um, it feels at times somewhat haphazard in its construction, whereas the first film, I'll give the first film that, it was very tightly constructed. They knew what they were going for. Everything like flows pretty well in that. This, not always. It felt like they had too many ideas. Like, they want to do, like, a courtroom drama, but then they also want to do, like, a musical, but then they also kind of want to do this slight Bonnie and Clyde thing, but then they kind of want to go meta with the ending and have the Joker persona, like, escape the confines of the character who initially embodied it. Um, and they kind of just threw it all together, and I'll say it doesn't always cohere necessarily the best uh, but overall, I thought this film was actually really great. I had, I really kind of had a blast with it. Uh, the musical numbers I thought were entertaining. Lady Gaga is not utilized the best in this. There's the writing of her character is kind of thin, I think. Uh, but I like the fact that they reinvented Harley Quinn from being um, a, 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 you know, the therapist that the Joker seduces into being his kind of twisted paramour. Um, into like a groupie who is not loyal to Arthur Fleck, but is loyal only to the Joker. 
I thought that was also pretty kind of brilliant, even though it maybe needed to be fleshed out a little bit more. Uh, but overall, I thought this movie was actually really great. Um, I'll, I, you know, I'm going to take a stand right now, unjustly maligned. I think it's brave. I think it's daring. I think it's much more like risky and, and again, much more brave and daring than the first film was. I really did have kind of a blast with it. Uh, so to rate Joker Folia Do, I'm gonna give it a B. I'm gonna give it a B. It's not perfect. Um, there were aspects of it that could have been done better, but overall, it it surprised me. I I came away really liking it. But what I love so much about this movie is that Todd Phillips really took that $200 million and said, not only am I going to piss off all the fans, I'm going to shit all over my own legacy with this because I'm going to make a movie for nobody but me, basically. And me, perhaps, I guess. But I just respect the hell out of that because that's the most Joker thing that he could have done with this is to subvert the subversion. And I think that's partly why this movie has received such a hostile um, uh, uh, reception because uh, people don't mind subversion apparently they don't mind when Thomas Wayne is Thomas Trump and a completely unlikable asshole they don't mind when the Joker is instead of this sinister uh, villain he is just again a cartoonishly pathetic schmuck they don't mind the subversion but when you subvert your own subversion you make your the character that people had been so invested in just get unceremoniously killed at the end and then also have his love interest just completely drop him uh, because he no longer uh, fit the image that they wanted. When you, and, I mean, when you, um, when you, when you go that far and again, you subvert your own subversion, um, then people may have a problem, but I didn't like this. I thought it was so brave. I thought it was so ballsy, and I just had kind of a blast with it. I liked it better than the first film. Uh, so, yeah, I'm giving Joker Foley a due, a B. I think it's an unjustly maligned film. I do get why people don't like it, but I thought it was actually pretty great, and it surprised me. It really did surprise me. So, yeah, Joker Foley a due. Um, if you liked the first film, there's a good chance that you'll hate this. But if you're like me and you didn't really like the first film all that much, um, there's a chance that this one might actually uh, resonate with you more, I think. Um, it did with me anyway. And so for that reason, I'm giving it a B. Yeah, Joker Folia do. Had a good time with it. Uh, and as always, if you have enjoyed anything you've seen or heard here today, remember to hit that like button and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And until next time. Peace.